This contraption is pretty rough, but what we're trying to do is test out our major theories and just work out the proportions because everything has to cooperate. The purpose of the bolts is that it allows us a lot of adjustment. You can thread it up or down to change depth on things and they're easy to, to put in place. All of this ties into my just released Scott's Prototype Effort Theorem, which shows that the amount of effort you put into a prototype is not necessarily correlated to the value that you get out of it. Having no prototype has some value, but you have to put in just enough to, to work out the proportions and other details and move on. So it needs to be accurate enough to do that, but not so accurate that it takes too much time. Anyway, the basic idea here is that that bolt wheel is driven by the counterweight, and those bolts in turn drive the bearing, which is on the top of the pendulum arm. There's a lot of flexibility in this setup, both in the good sense and the bad sense, but I'm mainly interested in working out the spacing between those bolts, so it serves a purpose, even though the efficiency is extremely low. The next thing you need is a lock or a catch for that big wheel, and my original plan was to have one like this, because it seemed fairly easy, but I'm not sure why it seemed that way, because it's not. I opted for a system like this instead, which of course reminds me of other escapement mechanisms that I've seen. So it's a bit of reinventing the wheel, but I think that that can have value because you really work through why you arrive at a design like that, even if it's already out there. So provided that you don't spend too much time on it, I think it can be a worthwhile exercise. The bolts were sticking out too far, and I got tired of digging through the bin to find ones of the right size, so we opted for screws instead, and some of these were still sticking out too, so we had to cut those off. It took some time to get everything adjusted and working together, get the counterweight the right weight for where it's at on there, but we did, and it works pretty well. The clamps at the bottom of the pendulum and our little helix counterweight there are wobbling pretty badly, but those are easily fixed in a later version. Part of the reason why those clamps wobble so much is that the screw here actually jumps. You'll see the bearing doesn't come all the way over, so it makes it bounce, and that's kind of a waste of energy as well. The stop mechanism works pretty well. It's crisp. They aren't too deep. The only real issue here is the flexibility on that screw and that's just a result of its length, which is gonna go down a lot when we rearrange the parts and sandwich them more efficiently, efficiently later. 500 square feet seems like a lot of space, but you get a couple projects underway at the same time and it shrinks right down. Now that we have a better idea of what we need in our mechanism, we're gonna make a set of wheels which are extremely round and symmetrical. I'm starting here, I'll just rough cut them with the jigsaw. Then we'll head over to the table saw and use a pretty simple jig. Raising the blade, particularly into a rotatable piece like this, is generally not recommended, but we did it slowly. I had a good grip, there wasn't much play uh, vertically on that, and it never fell out of control for any of the three wheels that we made, and they turned out great. I took the wheel straight off the jig and put it on a bolt in the vise with a paint stick next to it, and you can see here with a 0.7 millimeter mechanical pencil that it's pretty smooth. One of those wheels needs to become a ring though, so we have to cut out the center and we're going to do it roughly at first with the jigsaw and then trap it between three bearings, put a router on the inside and swing it out into just the right place and then rotate that wheel and it should be pretty symmetrical and smooth. The noise isn't much fun, but the operation worked great and it usually does in situations like this because I very carefully trapped the piece and the router in every axis. It's stopped by the clamp there, for example, and I'm very careful not to do any climb cutting, so it really doesn't get out of hand. The new wheels are looking really good, but I couldn't figure out their orientation to the other parts and the arms without having the legs set up, so we went ahead and put together a basic frame here. Bearings from skateboards, my favorite of course, serve as the main pivot points. Clearance at the bottom is pretty minimal to maximize the pendulum length because I suspect that air resistance is not going to be insignificant here, and the slower the better for that. 
When I say air resistance, I don't mean on what you see here with just the two by six and a weight, but an actual cradle or other type mechanism with large blunt sides. With the bearings and other improvements installed, I was really curious to do the same test we did in our first video and see how much energy it was going to take to maintain this pendulum. So we went ahead and attached some sides to it to simulate the air resistance and started counting. We did this operation a couple of times to be sure, and while it was clear that the number of swings was definitely higher, when we did the math it was really surprising to see what it came out because it took about one-sixth the energy estimated to maintain these ones, and a 30-pound weight 24 inches up was giving us something like 26 minutes at a theoretical 100% efficiency transferring that potential energy down. So that's pretty shocking uh, improvement over the other one. Obviously the bearings are helping, slower speed, minimizing the angle that it's rotating at, all of these things help. And even if we figure in, uh, say, a 50% efficiency for our mechanism, which seems like a decent figure to go with since the regular escapements are supposed to be about 50%, that puts us at about 13 minutes, and I was aiming for 10, so we've got some wiggle room on the rough estimate. This is definitely the part of the project where you start to believe in it again, because at the beginning you think, oh yeah, we'll definitely pull this off. And then you run into a bunch of problems, and you think, okay, well, it's, it's looking all right. And then you come out the other side and say, yeah, we are going to pull this off. So it feels good. We're out of time for this week, but we have... A new frame made up, seems much smoother, it's definitely more efficient. And we have a new wheel here, nice and symmetrical, very, very smooth. We're going to get it mounted on there and uh, get this thing operating. So come back next week and see how it turns out. Thank you.